in a sense it flourished at a moment when architects and planners had a lot of not not just a lot of power but also a lot of space and they had a kind of commitment to build and they had a lot of people to house so there's a whole set of civic and democratic values that are built into this what, what people see in these buildings is as much a kind of architectural form as actually a kind of lost utopic vision the buildings themselves are drawing in people at a variety of different levels which is not just the quality of simplicity of design but also a sense of how these things got built and why they were built in that way these were actually experiments in living they were always about the social relations within them they were about families they were intended to be great places to grow up in the different textures and the angles and just how the light hits different places they're really lovely to photograph to photograph them in a very dramatic fashion which highlights their brutalness which is fine if that's what you're trying to do but I want to get deeper than that one quiet little corner where the light might just peek through and hit the concrete that's what I'm more interested in those quiet moments within the architecture If you are someone on the street, nearly every town and city will have a car park that's made of concrete that probably they have really bad memories of. I think that then tarnishes everything, unfortunately. A lot of pride went into making these buildings and a lot of thought of how people were going to use them as well. They're definitely built for people to use. We haven't given it enough time. They're only, it's only like 40, 50 years old and we're already knocking them down. So there was a sense of drawing the city together or knitting the people in the city together through these buildings providing them with space, light, air, communal goods. I don't think there's such a sense of communal goods anymore. But the imperatives are now different. You don't have a civic utopia, you have a commercial utopia. So the large buildings that are being built around me, they offer dream homes, lifestyle utopias. They're not offering a, a sense of the civic, a sense of the city as a whole. These buildings literally concretized that sense of the civic which of course can be systematically erased when you don't fund or look after those buildings some brutalist architecture is literally crumbling and it's impossible to do anything else with other than demolish it because it is so expensive the concrete through which these things were built is, is literally falling off the structures and at a certain point you just go let's let it rot to the point where it has to be demolished One of the architectural critics has sort of said I had that ability to use concrete structure in a very plastic and very sculptural way. Their press handout described me as Zoe Luda, who's probably the father of British brutalism, which I don't think I am, but nevertheless. The first afternoon that the German bombers broke through to London, I was standing on top of an Anderson shelter in the old Kent Road looking up at them. I didn't have a second choice. I said, I want to design aeroplanes. What I didn't know was the government policy was to try and contract as many people into construction or reconstruction. And so I found myself starting in April 42 at the School of Building at Brixton, which was magnificent. I've laid bricks, made lead joints, carved away at masonry, done all the trades. Within three months of uh, being at the School of Building, I decided I was going to be an architect.
architecture is all about the three-dimensional use of space, if you think about it, whether it's bits of stone, bits of concrete, whether you've got tits and bums stuck on the outside in some sort of classical composition or whatever, but in fact it's a three-dimensional use of space. You want to try, if you can, and give each block an identity so people living in that block aren't just going into another town block that's exactly the same as all the others. Uh, in other words, uh, it gives it an individuality. It was a question of form, polish, function, and the structure determining the, the thing. If it's a glass box, you'll see the staircase grinning at you through, through glass. Uh, and what's more, the, the roof will be littered with lift overruns, water tanks. The moment you take the staircase out, you have on top of your staircase tower, you have all that, so you don't have that clutter on the roof. And so the whole thing becomes an architectural composition and the, the staircase then becomes a feature. So you're trying to hide it away, pretend it doesn't exist, uh, becomes a feature. I wasn't set, I, I didn't set out to, to, to push out the frontiers of uh, architectural design. I set out to design buildings as, as I thought. Nobody ever comes back. In the olden days, as an owner, if you were going to mess around with an existing building, you'd go to the original architect if he was still around. Both out of courtesy, but primarily also because the original architect would know all about the building. They don't do that now. I just wanted to be appreciated as buildings of that time, designed honestly. Uh, and uh, you know the number of, number of uh, quotations now coming out, which are favourable on the basis that uh, our buildings were always honest. Uh, there's, no, no, there's no tricks. And somebody once said, I only said, your buildings are you. But I say my view, I'm, there has to be a justification. Can they be, could they have been reused? The answer is yes, they could. If you want to see buildings as dead things, once you've put them up, as bricks and mortar or concrete, you only do with them what you originally intended to do. And I think you need to see buildings as crystallizing living relationships between people. We now think of them as monuments because they're kind of these dead structures, but actually they were intended to be sand pits. Uh, and I think that that's what you need to bring back is the sand pit nature of what's kind of going on in these things, is that these are actually experiments in living. 50 years later, social relations, everything's kind of moved on. What's the sand pits look like now? I mean, even sand pits need structures right around them to enable the space of play. So how do you now play with something that seems so fixed and indeed crumbling? What we've lost is the ability to play with these spaces and to actually reimagine the utopias that can be contained or built around them. This is why brutalism, the structures are being allowed to ruin and then demolished. It's because that kind of utopia, utopian thinking, this place as a playground, is what has been lost. You know, I've, I, uh, I've lost a wife, that's anguished. I lost a son, that's anguished. This is just said.